dear Dr. Mitsubata, dear Dr. Sawa, Professor Omori, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to be here in Kyoto. The conference on renewable energies here in Kyoto is in line with many meetings and conferences which are taking place in the decisive times where we have set the course for our future energy supply, not only in Germany, but also in Japan. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Mori, who invited me and gave me the opportunity to come here and talk about the German way of transforming the energy towards an age of renewable energies and about, uh, hopefully, common goals, shared views, and experiences. The crucial question of today's energy policy is, how do we manage to drastically reduce our dependency on nuclear and fossil fuels in the forthcoming years and decades? The public is concerned about the future and our future energy supply. Many of the issues relevant in this respect are familiar of those who are directly involved in renewables. People want to know how everything will work out if routines are changed and where electricity will come from and how our energy supply will remain affordable if it's based on, different, on a different concept. In Germany, we have not just considered these questions, we have tackled them actively. I will talk about these activities and try to give a brief outline on the developments in Germany, the climate and energy policy with a special focus on renewable energies. So, where do we come from? Our energy supply, energy supply in Germany today is A, not secure, we import 70% of our energy sources. It's B, not uh, efficient. Fossil fuels have high external costs. And it's C, the energy supply is not environmentally compatible due to greenhouse gases and air pollutants. Germany is about to embark on a fundamental overhaul of the energy supply system. The decision to do so has taken be even before the events of uh, Fukushima Daiichi. In September 2010, the German government adopted a comprehensive energy concept designed to herald the new age of renewables. As a governmental concept, it follows for the first time a long-term and comprehensive approach until the year 2050, taking into account all relevant sectors. In addition, specific measures for implementation are outlined. The guiding principles for energy policy in Germany are the three objectives, economic uh, efficiency, security of energy supply, and environmental protection, including a particular climate protection. This also raises the question of whether our current energy supply will still be able to satisfy these three objectives in 20, 30, or 40 years, particularly in the view of the global developments. This is the question we have to ask today as the long-term investment cycles in the industry mean that the long-term framework needs to be in place as early as possible, providing all actors with the planning certainty they need. With our German energy policy decisions, we have given a clear response. We want to achieve a significant increase in energy efficiency, we want to advance the expansion of renewable energies, energies, and we want at the same time fulfill our commitments on greenhouse gas mitigation. For the first time we have set out a clear roadmap up to uh, the year 2050. Our policy is guided by our climate targets. Climate protection remains to be the top priority in Germany and it is, a, is, uh, it is a decisive driving force for, uh, in the transformation of our energy system. Greenhouse gas emissions are to be cut by 40% by 2020 compared with 99 levels by 55% uh, by, by the year 2030 and by at least 80% by 2050. Incidentally, this is also the minimum reduction that industrialized countries must achieve to meet the target of limiting global warming to a maximum of 2 degrees Celsius. 
the expansion of renewable energy sources is a crucial parameter for meeting our climate goals. For the first time, we have set out a clear roadmap up to 2050. German energy concept is built on the continuous expansion of the share of renewable energies in the electricity sector. By 2020, we want to cover at least 35% of our cross electricity consumption by renewables. In the following years, we are aiming at 50% by 2030, increasing up to 65% by 2050, and finally up to 80% by the year 2050. The goals of our energy concept are the first pillar to achieve this transformation. They have to be complemented by a second pillar, a comprehensive set of policy instruments and measures that enable us to acti actually achieve them. We have taken a truly holistic uh, uh, policy approach. Transforming our energy system is an ambitious project for the decades to come. It presents many technological challenges and calls for fundamental changes to the existing energy infrastructure. We'll have to undertake major efforts, efforts to reach our goal. And this is why we have to start today in order to take into account of the long investment cycles in the energy sector, which requires a long-term framework and the planning certainty. This also helps us to undertake modernization and changes as part of the planned investments, enabling us to reduce costs. The main areas are renewable energies, grid infrastructure, and last but not least, energy efficiencies. The expansion of renewables has to be continued, swift and continuous, cost-effective and environmentally sound. At the same time, a strong and modern grid is a future precondition uh, for an energy supply primarily based on renewables. This is why grid expansion and expansion of renewables have to go hand in hand. At the moment, our grid is not adequately equipped to deal with large volumes of renewable electricity. Important also to achieve, are, uh, to achieve the goals for renewable expansion is to continue improving energy efficiency. In 2010, the energy concept included a perspective also for nuclear energy with the life cycle, uh, within the life cycle of the power plants. In the aftermath of the events at Fukushima, the role of nuclear power was reconsidered and its residual risks were reassessed. This marks a, paradig a paradigm shift in our energy supply. However, it is not only a consequence of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. In fact, it comes from our conviction that the path towards an age of renewables can secure our energy supply for the future and in the face of climate change, overuse fossil resources, in, in the face of climate change, overuse of fossil resources and the growing world population. Hence, the energy concept measures remain valid after the new assessment of nuclear energy and with a package of measures for accelerating the transformation process of June 2011, last year, some elements will be implemented more rapidly. Midway through last year, the federal government, the German parliament, Bundestag and Bundesrat, both, both chambers of the parliament, decided on the transformation of Germany's energy system. The energy package laid important foundations for this. Most of the associated decisions are based of the, um, on the energy concept, which has already been adopted in the autumn 2010. Until June 2011, we have established and amended legislation to support renewable energies and energy efficiency, to accelerate grid expansion, and improve the conditions for offshore wind energy deployment, for example. The package of eight measures was established, agreed, and concluded in a short period of time. Some measures are new legislation, such as the Atomic Energy Act or the Grid Expansion Acceleration Act. Others are amendments of existing laws. Before I now focus on renewables, I will shortly mention the aspect of phasing out nuclear energy in Germany. Germany decided for the second time to phase out electricity generation from nuclear power by the end of uh, the year 2022 at the latest. This implies the 
Eight of 17 nuclear power plants are taken off grid permanently. The remaining nine power plants will gradually be shut down and disconnected from the grid within the next 10 years. It has to be stated that concerns of an impact on electricity prices in 2011 were unfounded. The average electricity price on spot market in Germany returned to a level prior to the moratorium or even below. It is a change when about 70% of secured power production capacity in Germany were taken off, while the highest ever observed peak demand has been just above 80 gigawatts. But the German power system can cope it. And also, European and national experts told us there is no fundamental negative impact involved in the electricity grids of our European partners. And here you can see the, uh, the spot market price uh, which has uh, more or less been stable. So now I will outline the development of renewable energies in Germany and the most important support schemes with a special focus on the Re Renewable Energy Sources Act. The share of renewable energies on the final energy production in Germany is con constantly increasing. By the end of last year, it was more than 12%. Two-thirds of the final energy consumption are from biomass, mainly for heat production and biofuels. The use of renewable energies in the electricity sector is, electricity sector is playing an increasing role. So, how did we achieve that? We have uh, different support schemes for renewable energies. Uh, they cover all sectors in Germany. In the electricity sector, we have the Renewable Energy Sources Act. I will focus on that uh, later on. And the released package, uh, a newly released package um, within the energy package last year, it's the uh, KFW Offshore Wind Program. It's the financial support of in total 5 billion euro for the establishment of the first 10 offshore wind parks. In the heat sector, the Renewable Energy Heat Act and the Market uh, Incentive Program uh, are the one to be mentioned. The support in the trans transport sector consists of a blending obligation of biofuels and the road traffic and the governmental program on e-mobility. Not to forget not to forget the support of technological research and development by the governmental energy research program, which covers all sectors with a focus on energy storage and grid technologies. The allocated budget amounts up to 3.5 billion euro until the year 2014, includes, uh, including 1.3 billion euro for research in the field of renewables. Here you can see the targets, uh, uh, as I have shown in the table before. Germany has gained considerable valuable experience in the field of promoting renewables in the electricity sector with our Renewable Energy Sources Act, in particular with the guaranteed feed-in tariffs. Since the introduction of the law 11 years ago, the share of renewables in electricity generation has risen from 6.5% to over 20%. In other words, it tripled within a decade. This was an increase few would have believed possible only a few, few years ago. And it makes us very optimistic to achieve further ambitious goals. The amendments to the Renewable Energy Sources Act and the Energy Industry Act, along with the new Grid Expansion Acceleration Act and the additional measures contained in the energy package are based on that long-term target plan for the expansion of renewable energies. The long-term scenarios published just a few days ago on behalf of the Federal Ministry for the Environment demonstrate how these targets can be achieved. Three main scenarios assume that renewable energies will account for over 80% of electricity consumption in 2050 and show different options of achieving such a share. According to these scenarios, the renewable energy targets for mobility and heat are also achievable. So, <clears throat> clear investment signals and stable framework conditions are the key to this success. Key principles include binding long-term targets 
as I showed before. Guaranteed grid connection, the obligation of grid operators to purchase electricity produced from renewables, and as such a priority feed-in for renewable energies. Furthermore, stable technology-specific financing tools as the guaranteed feed-in tariffs and the transparent digression. A regular monitoring, evaluation, and review process of the law. And a transparent system to equalize the additional costs from electricity for electricity from renewables. We are, adhering, we are adhering to these guiding principles with our revised act and within the overall framework of our energy concept and its accelerated implementation. The Renewable Energy Sources Act repre represents the main pillar for the expansion of renewable energies. The 2011 amendment to, this, to the Act reflects the challenges we will continue to face in the coming years. We aim to continue to push forward with our expansion of renewable energy sources. We aim to improve the cost efficiency of the Renewable Energy Act, the Resources Act, and we must optimize the interaction between renewable and traditional generation of electricities, the expansion of grids and storage facilities, and electricity consumption. The overall system must therefore be always be in the forefront of our uh, considerations. So let's start looking at the expansion of renewables. Currently we can say that the transformation of the energy system is well on its way the expansion of renewable energies is un undergoing a dynamic, a dynamic development. Last year, renewables already accounted for 20% of electricity consumption. This means that in the last 10 years, we have roughly tripled the share accounted for renewables, as I said before. The production of electricity from wind and sun become, has become an important pillar of Germany's power supply system. It constitutes the second largest power supply source in Germany and is for the first time ranks ahead of gas, hard coal or nuclear power. We aim to achieve to further marked increase by 2020 when renewables should cover at least 35% of our energy requirements. We are optimistic that we can achieve this as I already said. The prospects offered by the global market for renewable energies offer tremendous economic opportunities. Currently, global investments in renewable energies account for around 200 billion euro per year worldwide. Roughly, in, one, in every two euro invested in uh, energy technology, one in every two euro goes to renewable energies. And this trend is increasing. Renewable energies thus offer a tremendous potential for growth. But despite this economic potential, we cannot view the expansion of renewable energies in isolation of purely commercial perspective. Such a defense approach would clearly fall short to the mark, mainly for three reasons. First, renewable energies have largely honest prices. By contrast, fossil fuels, and especially coal, entail long-term damage costs that are not reflected in the current prices. To be said, external costs, cost of climate change, for example. The renewable energies used in Germany in 2010 for generation electricity and heat prevented environmental damage of around 8.4 billion euro. A purely commercial perspective ignores key macroeconomic benefits. For example, renewables reduce the risk of major accidents a benefit which is hard to evaluate in monetary terms. Renewables also reduce economic and political dependencies. For example, the use of renewable energies in Germany in 2010 avoided around 6 billion euro in energy imports. And third, finally, the expansion of renewables also produces major investments. Since 2009, the annual volume for, has been far in excess of 20 billion euro. The whole economy along the value chain is benefiting, including many service companies. Due to their mainly de decentralized character, renewables are particularly important in contributing to regional value creation. Apart from providing additional jobs, increased tax income, 
is another especial, especially important factor. Many local authorities and districts have recognized this fact and are, are utilizing the positive economic benefits uh, effects to benefit their regions. The second challenge of the revised act is the cost efficiency of promoting renewable energies. The automatic decretion laid down the, uh, in, in, the, in the law takes into account future falling technology costs, technological costs. However, we have to face a significant increase of the surcharge, surcharge costs of the guaranteed feed-in tariff from 2 euro cent to 3.5 euro cent per kilowatt hour in 2011. That means an annual burden of approximately 125 euro for an average family. Here in this slide, um, just to explain, oops, you can see the uh, development of the uh, electricity price for households. This is the part, this green one, this is the part for the uh, feed-in tariff surcharge. The rest is uh, generation, transport and marketing and uh, different fees and taxes. So the uh, feed-in tariff surcharge is about 15% of, uh, of the costs for electricity for a household. So citizens uh, are well aware that the expansion of renewable energies and power grids will cost money. They are prepared to accept this as an investment into the future. Even so, if the, in the medium term to long term, they are, also be, they, are, they are also able to see that this policy is paying off in the form of reduced electricity bills and fewer energy imports. However, it will only pay off if we restrict the Renewable Energy Sources Act to the market introduction of technologies and do not perceive it as a permanent subsidy and if we build expensive storage facilities only if their capacities will be sufficiently used. Modern load management and the expansion of electricity grids are infinitely more cost effective than the retention of both power plant capacities and storage facilities. In the medium term we will need both elements. The search for cost-effective solutions and correct timing will be crucial if the Renewable Energy Sources Act surcharge and the grid surcharge and therefore also electricity prices are to remain reasonable. This brings us to our third challenge. We need to optimize the interaction between renewables and traditional generation of electricity the expansion of grids and storage facilities and electricity consumption. This technical economic optimization of the overall system represents a historic task which we will have to master. If we decide, it will, if we decide uh, to achieve our goal of setting up a new power supply system and produce environmentally compatible, compatible uh, electricity at affordable prices, thereby guaranteeing security of supply and grid stability. Um, this is the, these are the, the, the main uh, motivations to change the energy systems. The task of optimization and not merely the expansion of renewable energies will determine the transformation of the energy system uh, that, uh, uh, to be successful. The strategic direction followed by the Renewable Energy Sources Act 2012 takes this optimization task into account. If renewables are to become a key pillar of our energy system, we cannot longer isolate them from the market. At the first time ever, therefore, the Renewable Energy Sources Act 2012 includes a market premium and for all, for all renewable energies, and it also has an additional, <coughs> additional incentive for demand-based electricity generation from biomass in form of a flexibility premium. In future, the market premium will enable operators of renewable energy installations to participate in the electricity market and generate additional revenues. The flexibility premium will enable operators of biogas plants to create the technical requirements for deferred feeding into networks, for example, through larger gas storage facilities and generators compared with continuous operation. 
The market premium also aims to achieve a cost-effective structure. We will monitor the use of these instruments very carefully. Now I'll switch over to the development of uh, PV installations in Germany and uh, the latest um, amendments of the law, which are mainly based uh, or caused by the uh, PV development. The approach is also uh, a reason for reducing the feed-in tariffs for solar power. Last year, system prices fell by just under 30%, and experts were predicting, were predicting a further 20% fall for 2012. With, with the expansion volume of 7.5 gigawatt, we had to reduce the feed-in tariffs in order to limit the costs for electricity consumers. Despite the prophecies of doom, the solar industry does have a bright future. In just a few years, the costs of generating electricity from photovoltaics have halved. They have thus fallen permanently uh, below the electricity prices payable by households. Solutions for electricity generation close to where it is needed are thus gaining a market outside the Renewable Energy Sources Act. I call this market introduction, which is the whole point of the Renewable Energy Sources Act. And here you can see how we changed uh, the law in the last years uh, according to the development uh, of PV installations. These are, let's say, ordinary amendments of the law. The law was uh, introduced to in the year 2000, and then we have the amendments 2004 and 2009. Um, here we have the first uh, amendment 2010 uh, especially uh, caused by photovoltaics and again um, mainly photovoltaics was the reason for the amendment uh, in, in the regular term for the amendment 2012 and uh, right after the beginning of the year we had a discussion on PV again and we had and now uh, the uh, new law is in the legislation process in the, uh, in the parliament uh, and uh, I have to say this is a real brand new information from Friday, it's still pending so the idea was to reduce the feed-in tariffs uh, once more uh, but uh, the parliament uh, has stopped it for, uh, uh, for the first time and now there are discussions on the feed-in tariff in the parliament. So <clears throat> this is uh, now the, uh, the, uh, the, the cornerstones of the new amendment. There is a simplification of uh, the PV, PV tariff system. There are, again, adjustments uh, of the PV tariff. Um, it's uh, a larger uh, decretion. Uh, it has uh, included the breathing cap, which is intensified and completed. Um, there is also a continuous uh, PV tariff uh, adjustment. Normally, uh, the adjustment came along with every amendment. Now we have a, a monthly decretion based on uh, quarterly monitoring results. So this uh, has something to do with the uh, installation um, waves, I would call it. So we have, for example, every time we uh, are heading towards uh, a certain date where the tariff is changing, we had a lot of installations uh, before that date because the people want to have the higher tariff. And with this continuous adjustment, we try to uh, keep the, the market uh, smooth and calm. And uh, last but not least, we have a market integration model for PV systems, which means that uh, the costs of remuneration of electricity uh, are produced uh, will be cut, um, and uh, this is another uh, this is another um, possibility to reduce the cost. So I will end my presentation with an outlook and the conclusions. Um, I was asked to talk also about the uh, European perspective and. Uh, in which way uh, the expansion of renewables um, will be um, carried also by the population. I start with the uh, European perspective of the German way. Um, in the the uh, 
EU 2020 goals for renewable energy, as uh, introduced by Professor Mori, had been uh, established during the German EU Council presidency and uh, within the uh, new roadmap 2050 of the EU, it uh, shows that the German energy concept follows uh, the right path. Um, also in the roadmap uh, of the European Union, uh, renewable energies and uh, energy efficiency are the primary pillars uh, of the uh, roadmap. The path with a high percentage of renewables is not more expensive than other decarbonization scenarios. This is very important and shows uh, that this is in line with our policy. But I have to admit <clears throat> that there's also a skepticism in Europe about the German transformation process, which is very ambitious. Um, some call it uh, the German lab, which means that they have a look on this from the outside. And uh, this has uh, two sides of the coin. On the one hand, there are people who uh, think that this is not possible. But on the other hand, they, uh, many say, that uh, if, they, if Germany uh, will fulfill this, then it could be an, uh, a good sign, uh, uh, something which could be covered uh, copied by others. So this is more or less uh, what we can say now. Um, I think the discussion is ongoing, and uh, we will see if the Danish presidency can set a cornerstone in this field. Yeah, I'm coming back to the opportunities uh, of the transformation process. I already talked about the global market for green technologies, which is expanding and which uh, is favorable for uh, renewable energies. Um, the markets are developed despite financial and econo economic crisis. Uh, this is uh, not so uh, astonishing. But it's uh, all, nevertheless uh, uh, an important point uh, that means that uh, there is stability in that market. Framework conditions uh, for renewables are crucial. Um, it's, it's very important to ensure a stable investment and financing environment. This is, uh, these are, this is key for, um, for the development of renewable energies. So, and the benefits, I already talked about that, is uh, that uh, the expansion is creating job and creating and securing jobs. Uh, it's maintaining competi uh, competi uh, competi competitiveness and uh, safeguarding uh, the climate protection in the end. About the acceptance, uh, I have to say, um, this is something which uh, should be uh, taken into account from the very first point, and this may also be uh, one of the uh, success elements in the German um, ex uh, expansion of renewables. Um, we have, for example, for the energy concept process, an in-depth monitoring and the reviewing process on a yearly basis. Um, we have also, uh, and this is very important, a uh, regular monitoring of renewables expansion as well as uh, of the uh, Renewable Energy Sources Act. There is in the law anchored an uh, evaluation and review process. We have, for example, with the energy package uh, um, established an early involvement of citizens in the planning procedures uh, for grid expansion. Uh, and last but not least, there is a transparency and public participation in grid issues. So these are more or less uh, important elements to have uh, a, a, a strong acceptance uh, in, 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 the, in the population. So I, have, I will conclude, and this is my last slide. Uh, the transformation of our energy systems will be Germany's single most important econo technological modernization project with strong national but also international implications. If we can bring this project successfully off the ground in Germany, in Europe's largest industrialized country, we expect it to radiate to other countries and have an impact on the course of economic, energy and climate policies both in Europe and worldwide. I hope that you will be inspired by these pioneering ideas and that you share our conviction
that climate protection and economic development are closely entwined and that the energy supply of the future will rely on renewables and that we can tackle global climate change together through the worldwide expansion of renewable energies. In this spirit, I would like to wish you a successful conference. Thank you very much.